Right. So how have they managed to uh, break down the problems in the nuclear deal? President Obama calling this a breakthrough. Joining us here on our panel, WPS Sidhu, senior fellow from the Brookings India Institution. Uh, Sushant Sareen, from, a senior fellow from Vivekan on the International Foundation. Dr. Wael Awad, the South Asian Bureau Chief for Al Arabia. And joining us via Skype from the United States is Michael Kugelman. He's with the Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson International Center. He is a senior program associate for South and Southeast Asian Affairs. Uh, so I think, uh, like, like they say in our country, let me start with you, uh, Michael. How is this being received uh, back in the States in terms of the range of agreements that have, uh, that have signed? And also, I want you to weigh in on the optics of it because there was a heck of a lot of it on display all through the day today. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, today has been all about uh, optics. I mean, it shows how far we've come. The fact that President Obama got off that airplane and was given this huge bear hug by Prime Minister Modi you think about how things were, uh, you know, a year ago when uh, everyone in Washington was worried about the fact that there was probably going to be a new Indian prime minister who had been banned essentially from visiting the United States for a number of years, mm -hmm. and then here we have them hugging like this. It really is extraordinary. I think that the the key issue here is the nuclear deal. The civil nuclear deal has always been seen as a symbol, or had been seen as a symbol of a deeper more strategic partnership between these two countries, and yet it lasts for so many years. It then became a, a symbol, in my view, of unmet and perhaps unrealistic expectations for how far this relationship between the U.S. and India can go. So the fact that we have a breakthrough today, the fact that the, the liability issue has seemingly been addressed and resolved, I think that's a very good sign and uh, really suggests that this relationship could perhaps be ready to take itself uh, to a new level. And in that sense, that all of this this uh, very happy rhetoric and all of okay. this uh, uh, exaggerated talk could be uh, translated into to reality, into an actual better relationship. Let's try and break that down, uh, WPS Sidhu, in, in terms of this insurance pool being able to cover about half the liability, about 750 crores, the rest of the half of the liability, to use the exact words that the Foreign Secretary used, would simply be uh, a guarantee by the government on a tapering basis. We don't know what kind of instrument that's going to be. But you think this will, this will, this will sell, uh, particularly politically, if the government of India were to stand in some form, guarantee, in case uh, there, is, there, is, there is a nuclear accident? Uh, well, we'll, still, we, we'll have to see. We're, we're still not certain whether that will indeed happen. Mm. And Ben Rhodes, the deputy uh, you know, national security advisor, security advisor uh, hinted as much where he said, well, you know, it's really still for the uh, U.S. companies okay. to try and kind of determine this. But I think there's a more fundamental issue, you know, which I think is worth recognizing at this summit. What you've seen today is really a repeat of the Bush Singh moment okay. in 2005. You know, two leaders coming together and actually, you know, uh, Prime Minister Modi saying as much, look, this summit is really not about commas and full stops. Mm. It's not about, you know, the language. It's about pushing this relationship forward. And I think that message has gone out. And the idea is to try and make this deal work and make it, uh, you know, attractive to all the key components which are there. Okay. Yes, there are all kinds of mandarins who will need to work th uh, through some of that. Mm. Uh, but that's the bigger message, which I think is really, really kind of important. But, but, but Sushant, I mean, uh, you know, diplomacy should never be about the commas and full stops like, the, like what the Prime Minister was saying. But the fact is, though some of those commas and full stops are in your statute books because of the form of a, in the form of a law. Uh, you think this insurance pool, both legally and politically, the way they've sort of structured it, one half of the liability is taken care of by the pool, the other half of the liability is taken care of by some form of government guarantee. You think that'll pass muster? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but you know uh, what uh, WPS talks about, the Bush uh, Singh moment, mm. uh, it was a great moment until we shot ourselves in the foot by passing the kind of law we passed. Okay. Uh, so frankly, we are now trying to turn the clock back in some ways. Uh, and the civil uh, or, or the new deal uh, really becomes important because, as the Prime Minister says, you know, it, it became a kind of a centerpiece for the kind of relationship which the two countries are yeah. trying to develop. But to my mind, what is really important, and I, frankly, I think there is going to be a bit of, uh, you know, uh, toing and froing over this whole thing, at least 
in domestic politics mm. because the BJP is going to be hoist on its own petard yeah. by the opposition party. You, and rightly you know, so. we, we haven't seen the commercial agreements being signed yet. So there is still, right. I, there, would, right. I would say, some distance to go. There right? is still some distance to go and there is some heavy lifting to be done, to, to be done. at least on the Indian side as well. Okay. Uh, but I think what is really important from my point of view is, uh, number one, the sheer range of ground that was covered, uh, and I'm just going... Um, after what the two uh, you know, uh, leaders said in their press statements. Uh, the sheer range of ground which they covered, uh, you know, from Asia Pacific to Indian Ocean, I can't remember when was the last time mm. Indians and Americans were talking about the Indian Ocean. Uh, you know, we're talking about Afghanistan, working together to stabilize Afghanistan. Mm. Uh, there is this mention of a technical cooperation on terrorism. So I wonder if it, that fits in with that story we were talking about in the morning. The intelligence. The intelligence uh, deal, you know, which is being worked out. So the sheer range of ground which has been covered. And then even more important, on the things which were the big irritants between the two uh, uh, countries, you know, at least on the civil nuclear uh, bill. You know, the, uh, the fact that both sides tried to, you know, climb down from mm. their positions and tried to find some kind of a middle ground. Middle ground. Now, I don't think this has anything to do with chemistry. Uh, it, of course, chemistry is important. But I think both countries are also coming down to the conclusion that there is this strategic convergence mm. between them which mm. needs to be built upon. And, and nuclear is just and, one facet and, of and it. Exactly. Okay. And so that is why this, this desire uh, to, you know, find middle ground is also motivated by that larger strategic convergence which we probably are seeing between the Okay, just give me a moment because we're getting some uh, news flash here. Uh, this is, of course, relating to the Padma Awards, uh, among others who will be given the Padma Awards uh, this year, are Bill and Melinda Gates. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but do, do the Padma Awards go to, to foreign nationals? Well, if the Bharat Ratna can go to Nelson Mandela, then yeah, the Padma yeah, yeah. Awards so, can uh, go again, to... Again, is it an indication, you'd say, uh, the growing... In India-U.S. Uh, relationship, Dr. Rao? I think there are many, many factors to this uh, fostering of the relation. One of it is just to have it more of a, the, you know, uh, uh, upcoming relation that this is the pr Prime Minister of India who is bold in taking his decision. He is, the, he is taking the risk of an extra mile to go ahead with the American deal. And he wanted to show his own public also that, yes, it is the na time now to establish a new relation between the U.S. and India, and there is no U-turn on this. Okay. And I think that is the message he is trying to give. And if such kind of uh, award comes, that's also fall in the same track. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you know, so, I, I, I think, think to be fair to Bill and Melinda Gates, They've done a lot of work. They've done a lot, done of, a lot work. of work. Incredible so think, amount of work. I think um, out of most of the people who have been given the Padma Award <laughs> yes. this time, I think they are the most deserving. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I tend to agree with you. And I mean, they the probably Gates, never lobbied for it. The, the yeah. Gates Foundation's like done some fantastic right. work uh, in rural India particularly. Uh, we're going to take a break here on the program when we come back. And I think the big takeaway, of course, would be that the strategic embrace between D.C. and, uh, and New Delhi, which happened, of course, uh, uh, in 2005 as well between uh, then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and, and then President George Bush. But somehow there was some restraint when it came to that strategic embrace. That restraint seems to be gone now. We're sort of fully hitching our wagons in that sense with the Americans. Before I take that break, let me get a quick comment in from uh, Neelam Dio, who's also now joining us, former diplomat and co-founder and director of Gateway House, another think tank. Uh, what's the big takeaway for you, ma'am? Uh, obviously, I mean, Michael talked about this as well. It was big, big, big on, on, on optics, on atmospherics. I mean, chemistry was even uh, a large part of the joint press interaction where one question was about chemistry. But outside of that, what are the big takeaways in terms of the concrete deals that have been struck today as far as you're concerned? Well, I think the nuclear deal is clearly being projected as the centerpiece mm. of this visit and this interaction. Uh, I think that, you know, if they're calling it a breakthrough and they're saying it's done, one should accept it at face value. But there is a, a kind of feeling about the devil being in the details. And certainly the United States is very legalistic, though I understand that the lawyers of some of the companies were also in the talks. Uh, but it is rather... Uh, disproportionate. The contracts are worth over uh, 100 lakh crores and the compensation fund that's being set up is uh, 1500 uh, crores. There's, there's clearly something until the agreements are actually made public 
uh, we won't uh, really know because even today they're talking about having arrived at an understanding but the text of the agreement has yet to come into the public domain that's right and hopefully there is some distance between uh, now and when that text eventually comes out uh, into the uh, public domain I'm going to take a break here in the program as we take a break we we'll leave you with what else but our uh, walk and talk tunes this is breaking tunes courtesy our in-house cartoonist Neelab this is his take on uh, what Prime Minister Modi leaving his uh, signature stamp in that sense on the diplomatic engagement today that walk and talk at Hyderabad House Lawns this is Neelab's take Welcome back to Namaste Obama, continuing in special coverage here on CNN and IBN, your first port of call for the Obama visit. A host of deals have been uh, signed, uh, most notably, of course, a civil nuclear deal. We talked about that in the first part of our program. Let's talk about uh, defense, which has been a huge area of cooperation between India and the United States, as we're seeing pictures from Russia for the above and from a few minutes ago, where the president uh, has now arrived for the banquet for the ceremonial dinner that happens before a public day. And I want to break back uh, Michael Kugelman from the Woodrow Wilson Center. Uh, in terms of defense, I think uh, the fact that the framework, the first framework from 05 to 15 has worked so wonderfully well. Uh, the United States is now India's largest defense supplier. The second framework, the new one that they're trying to put in place for the next 10 years, uh, there's a big emphasis on uh, technology transfer, on joint production, on joint collaboration. Uh, do, do you see that as the way forward? particularly so because it fits in with the Prime Minister's theme of Make in India. <laughs> All right, I, I think we've lost Michael's uh, audio. We'll try and fix that if we can through the course of this program. But here in our studios, we're still in conversation with WPS Sidhu, Sushant Sareen, uh, Dr. Wael Awad, and also Neelam Dio is joining us via satellite from Mumbai. Uh, you, you, want, you want to take that? Uh, in, in terms of, we are seeing at least four projects, which uh, the Secretary is called Pathfinder projects. Mm -hmm. uh, one is on the unmanned aerial vehicle. It's, it's a surveillance drone. The range is not all that much. The C-130, we know the roll-on, roll-off for the C-130s, and there are two other defense projects. You think this, I mean, they're starting small or, all right, but you think it's a good enough start in terms of the co-production uh, co-research, if you will, of, of these weapon systems. Right. I actually think uh, th this is a very significant uh, start, and it's a very useful way to go about it. And if you look at the range of this four, uh, they're actually quite quite massive. Uh, let's start, uh, and let's start with the two relatively smaller ones, you know, uh, the Raven. Mm. Uh, this is actually very, very useful for special forces. Uh, because of its limited range, it can actually be deployed way, way up in front and, you know, is, is really kind of critical. In, but, in, but it's an unarmed one. It's just a surveillance drone. But that's the importance for special forces in some okay. ways. And you've got other access also to Israeli uh, drones. So, you know, there's a degree of competition there All as right. well. But that's one element. Right. The roll-on, roll-off will really provide great capability to the C-130 because it will quicken up your time of loading and offloading it. You know, these are set modules. And working that through to develop it indigenously is a critical element. The third one is actually uh, not just limited to the Kaveri engine, but actually uh, aero engines. And that I think No, is but, but on that they've only uh, announced a working group. They haven't announced a project to kickstart the Kaveri engine or, or for that matter an alternate engine. On the, on the aircraft carrier, carrier technology as well as on the jet engine technology, it's still at a working group level. And, that, and that's a useful start because in some ways if you have the Pathfinder uh, mm. projects, you know, leading on to something, then you could actually step it up into these two uh, significant areas. Because one of the issues really is to see whether there is the ability to absorb the technology. Yeah. And, you know, how do you kind of... Uh, integrate, make, if you will. Make it in, make in India, you yeah. know, and uh, integrate. Yeah, you know, the, the reason I asked uh, WPS Sidhu about this is because the, the big stuff, the high-tech stuff cannot happen uh, of in terms of transfer from yeah. the U.S. to India, unless we are party to these uh, control regimes, which is MTCR, the Vasanar Arrangement, the Australia Group, the NSG. Uh, and we've been hearing this since 2005, that the U.S. will support our claim to all these uh, you know, multilateral regimes. Again, we heard a lot of assurances today as well. What, what are we seeing in terms of forward movement there? I, I, w I would take uh, the assurances on these four technology regimes a little more seriously than I would on the UNSC. 
Because the UNSC yeah. is something which might happen in the future. Yeah. There is just too complicated. But even on the NSG, why would the Chinese let, let us in, uh, in, into the NSG? No, well, but that would be the hardest, I think, of well, all, well, of all actually, the arrangements. I, I, actually, there's one way of trying to bring the Chinese on board, and which is, you already saw that in the conversations with Xi Jinping, is to talk to them about possible civil nuclear cooperation. Okay. So if they see there's an advantage, and you know, it will actually ease their way if India is part of the NSG. Sorry, okay. I interrupted. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I was going to say something similar because uh, with the Chinese uh, on NSG and other stuff, you can, uh, you know, probably balance it out, give them something, get their support. Even the Americans, for example, even when we were getting the waiver, mm. NSG waiver, yeah. uh, the Americans did play a role. So mm. I would think that these four technology regimes uh, are far, uh, it's, it's better to get an assurance on them. Uh, you know, uh, probably but the again, UNSC saying, has a lot of sex appeal, yeah. but very little value. But, but we've had this assurance for the last 10 years. Yeah, but you know, uh, now since we are breaking new ground or trying to break old ground in a new way, okay. uh, probably I would take these stills <laughs> a little more seriously. I, I like that phrase, breaking old ground <laughs> in a new yeah. way. Yeah, because that's exactly what we are doing. Because like I said, we shot ourselves in the foot. Yeah, we did. The Americans really didn't have any incentive to get us in. Mm. Uh, we were trying to, you know, hold back on a number of other agreements and arrangements on defense cooperation, on intelligence cooperation, or a range of other issues. Okay. So I think uh, that is something which seems to be, we seem to have got a breakthrough on that. Okay. Of course, how it plays out, we'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, I'm going to take a break. I'll come back and get a comment from Dr. Rawal as well as Neelam Dio. Uh, in terms of the geopolitical context in which this is happening, there was a lot of talk about cooperation in Afghanistan. Uh, what is it that U.S. sees as India's role there? Also, a lot of reference to maritime security, about the Indian Ocean region. We'll try and talk about that on the other side of this quick break. Keep it right here. This is your first and and I can sh uh, say this with some degree of assurance that this is your best port of call when it comes to trying to break down uh, the details of this historic visit. All right, welcome back to this continuing coverage of uh, Namaste Obama. We're trying to pass some of the details of the agreements that were, uh, that were touched upon today in the interaction between the two heads of government. Uh, uh, interestingly, a mention of Iran today, and Dr. Awad, I want to get your comments on that before I go to Michael and Neelam Dio. Uh, I can't think uh, uh, of an interaction between the U.S. President and the Indian Prime Minister where Iran was so explicitly mentioned. Well, they will not, you will not uh, be seeing it in the focus on that, even the press conference and all, but you may see it in the details of the, the, the joint, joint statement, yeah. statement where you will have lots of other topics which uh, they mentioned. But I think the Iranian angle is very interesting to, to the, the whole regional kind of cooperation, especially in terms of Afghanistan and Iranian yeah. breakthrough with the P5 plus, uh, plus one, where the American think and sense that this is the deal is going through in, in, in a very short time. And they have been also telling the Saudis to reduce the rhetoric against Iran. So at least there's kind of a compromise on the Syrian issue. So, so he's going to Saudi Arabia to try and engage with the new I king and say that, look, he first he will settle the Saudi house in order yeah. because there is already a political uh, coup within the family there. Mm -hmm. And then he will speak of the, whether they will continue with the same uh, uh, language of supporting terrorism and supporting the Wahhabist movement in yeah. the ISIS movement or whether they are going to back out and then they will look into their own domestic issues. I think these are the issues the American trying to address now. Okay. I also want to get Michael in. Uh, Michael, I mean, again, a reference to Afghanistan. Both the president and the prime minister mentioned this. Uh, what what kind of role uh, does America see or envision for for India? And India is still pretty reluctant to get involved in in Afghanistan in any kind of military way. Yes, there is a lot of development assistance that's being extended, uh, but w what is it that that uh, DC would like us to do more? Well, I think the idea is for um, the Indians to uh, deepen the strategic partnership or strategic agreement that was signed between the Indians and the Afghans a number of years ago, which, as you say, mainly pertains to economic uh, and diplomatic cooperation. Yeah. I think that there is concern here in Washington that with the foreign troop uh, withdrawal essentially complete, that uh, things could get a lot worse in Afghanistan before they get better. So the idea of having a trusted regional partner, in India, um, continuing, if not deepening, its uh, economic it, uh, diplomacy and support to Afghanistan it, it, would, you know, would be a very so, welcome step. So, so Shant wants to respond to it, but, but just before I go to him, it, it seems to me like, you know, if you were to break this down in layman terms, it's like, you know, the Americans came, they messed up Afghanistan, and now it's left to the people in the region to pick up the pieces. 
Well, they messed up Afghanistan because they fought the wrong war in the wrong country. Uh, but that's besides the point. You would have wanted them to go to what? Pakistan, right? <laughs> well, that was, the, that was the problem to start with. Uh, and that is yeah. still the problem. And when the Americans say that Indians should play a role in Afghanistan, uh, does the new Afghan president want us to play a role out there? If he just wants that the Indians should write blank checks for them, I'm afraid that ain't going to happen. But uh, no, even when we had Hamid Karzai, and he was asking for a greater role. It's not like we did much. No, I, you but, know, the but, but that time, look, we were not no, no, doing no. much even in the, India. The Afghan so. ambassador, they, they've been waiting for two uh, helicopters, right? And these are used helicopters from, from back in the 90s, I think. They've been waiting for the last five no, but years. But again, uh, part of the problem for that, uh, part of the blame for that goes to the Americans. Because they also did not want the Indians to get uh, engaged with the Afghans. Uh, in a in a in a very military sense in this in terms of supplying equipment and stuff mm -hmm. because they thought that that would spook the parks okay. and they would start doing a lot of okay. they were already doing bad things and they would do even more bad things. All right. Afghanistan. So I, I, I've got so, like a minute. So I think there I, is I got a problem a minute, out there. Uh, going around the panel, you you think this is historic? Is is it unfair to use the word historic in terms of the substance of what they've achieved? Well, you know, it's very rare for the spokesperson of the MEA to call any summit historic. And okay, when he, and he does, and he does, and he does, and he did, I, I think, you know, he says it with a certain gravitas. So, Do yes, in many ways, it is historic, but it needs to be followed up. All right. Dr. Robert? I think it, if you see as exactly what it was said, that if you see from the chemistry, from the talk in the ministry, and from the everything win-win situation for both the sides, it is a historic. It seems and like I would it's call a it it's part. a new uh, chapters in the, in the partnership, strategic the, partnership. They are the new Bush and Manmohan Singh, <laughs> if I can put it that way. At least what we saw of the two of them in 2005. But clearly, a lot of chemistry, a lot of uh, you know bonhomie between uh, the two leaders. I want to thank our entire panel here in the studios as well as in Mumbai and uh, all the way from uh, the United States. Thanks for joining us folks. Uh, we will leave you with of course what else but a selfie by both Barack Obama and Narendra Modi. They're enthusiastic wow. users of social media. The big question that everybody on social media is asking is will they take that selfie and if they do Will it beat uh, the current record holder? I think it's the Ellen DeGeneres selfie. Shiny Iyer takes a look at the history of uh, the selfie. Leaving you with that story. Thanks for your time.